Welcome back to another video on the channel. The 2021 Australian Open Women's Final is set. Naomi Osaka will look to win her fourth Grand Slam title on Saturday up against the American Jennifer Brady who's also enjoyed a fantastic run to the final. Now, just looking at Naomi Osaka and veering away from her semi-final and tournament so far, I think over the past 20 years, Roger Federer and Serena Williams in particular have been brilliant flag bearers for tennis. They've inspired the next generation, they've entertained tennis fans across the world and been two fantastic champions across many others. But I think with those two especially reaching their retirement at 39 years old, I think tennis needs new players to come along, have new champions and new players to do what Serena and Roger have done, you know, inspire the next generation and entertain people across the world. And I think at the moment across men's and women's tennis, there's nobody doing that better than Naomi Osaka. And I find Osaka so fascinating to watch because she makes the game look so easy at times. She makes it look like she's just playing in the park with friends. Um, on the court, she's got that relentless dominating demeanour where she's just playing outrageous tennis at times that nobody can live with which has seen her win three grand slams at the age of 22 off the court she's shy funny and just treats tennis like it's nothing to her and she's able to produce the best tennis when she needs it the most and that's leading on to my overall point here is that I don't think we've seen the best of Naomi Osaka by any stretch I think at last year's US Open she played fantastically well throughout the tournament, serving very well. But this tournament she hasn't done that. You know, she hasn't served well at all this tournament. And apart from the match against Muguruza, she's pretty much cruised to the final. And she's a player to become an, a better and better champion, I think, throughout her career. She's producing her best in the biggest moments. I mean, some of the backhand winners that she played against Serena when she needed them the other day was just an example of that. And I just think she's such an exciting young talent, you know, just 22 years old, as I mentioned. She's a player that if she remains injury free and remains consistent and wants to keep on proving and thriving for more and wants to break all the records, I think she's the one across men's and women's that can really carry the sport of tennis and take it to levels that it hasn't gone to before. So I think that sort of sums Naomi Osaka up um, this tournament that she hasn't played her best tennis but when she's had to fight and when she's had to produce her best tennis and win the big games she's been able to do it and leading on to that semi-final against Serena I did think it, the match was on the record of Naomi Osaka just because I think Osaka is just about invincible on a hard court at the moment. I can't see any woman's player living with Osaka's level that she can produce at times. I think Williams will count herself quite unlucky and a missed opportunity that she didn't win the opening set. Asaka was nowhere near at her best in that opening um, set. I think she did perhaps struggle with the early nerves and Serena got the early break and it looked like it was going to be a very interesting match. But Serena just missed important balls at big moments. You know She had chances for breaks and didn't take them with poor errors. And you can't do that against Asaka. You, know, you have to capitalise and nick that opening set if you can and Hope that Asaka doesn't find that extra gear. But once Asaka took the opening set, it was going to be a long way back for Serena. And Asaka really went for it in that second. As I mentioned, found some unbelievable backhand angles um, to just take apart Serena's defence. Matched that with the forehand. She found a few first serves in the second set in a couple of aces. And it all looked very easy for Naomi Osaka in that one. And it, it, it always seems to look very easy for Osaka. And it never looks like she gets out of first gear or she's ever really flustered or under any pressure. She just seems to be so relaxed at the moment in her head. She's confident of what she's doing. And I think she knows in her own game that if she produces somewhere near her best, that she's undoubtedly the best player in the world by quite some way. You know, I predicted Osaka to win this tournament pre-tournament. And before I've even mentioned Jennifer Brady, I can't look past Naomi Osaka. And I think she's a favourite for every single hardcore tournament that she competes in, especially um, with the level that she can bring at times. But moving on to Jennifer Brady, who I said when she reached the quarterfinals that I wouldn't be surprised if Brady went on and won this tournament. But that was sort of believing that, Osaka, believing that if Osaka dropped out the tournament, which obviously she hasn't, so now I see it very difficult for Brady, but you know Brady's got a huge game and she's very suited to these fast hard courts. She won the title in Cincinnati last year. She done well at the U.S. Open, which I think she lost out to Osaka actually um, in that tournament. But 
She's had some good wins this week. Jennifer Brady beating the likes of Donna Vekic. She beat Jessica Pagula in the quarters. Carolina Muchiver in the semis. Uh, the semi-final against Muchiver didn't quite live up to expectations, in my opinion. You know, it was a very scrappy opening set, which Brady managed to steal. The second set was probably the best level of tennis uh, that we got in the whole match with Muchiver. I think she made just one unforced error in the second set. She served very well, used the variations. Got that very nice all-round game to watch much of and she was incredibly good in that second set and at that point I thought the momentum was with her and she might go on to win because she had come down, come back from a set down a number of times in this event. But I think Brady was clever in set three. She realised that she was making too many enforced errors in those two openers and in the third she just looked to extend the rallies, get much of a deep back in the, in the baseline and just wait for the short balls and Brady to unload. And that's what she'd done. I think in the first two sets she was probably guilty of trying to win the points too early and looking for the lines and just trying to hit winners for fun, which didn't quite work and she quickly unravelled in that second. But in the third, as I say, she, reg- she regained her composure, extended the rallies and just hit a bigger way to shut the much of her and did eventually get over the line in that one to set up this final against Osaka and... I think if Brady wasn't up against anybody other than Naomi Osaka, I would give her a big chance of winning this one. Because as I mentioned, she does have the big ground strokes on forehand and backhand. She's a good, solid returner of serve. She's got a very good first serve of her own, which she hasn't found consistently yet. So that could help her in the final if she was to find that. But I just think Naomi Osaka does everything better than Jennifer Brady. Um... It's just about finding that consistency. As I mentioned, Osaka is serving, I think she serves some like 50% of her serves against Serena Williams and still managed to come through in straight sets, which tells you how well Osaka is playing. If Osaka finds her first serve, then I don't see this match going a distance at all. Osaka is a fantastic returner. Her backhand's becoming as good as her forehand. They're both as ruthless and destructive as each other. And... As much as I think Brady can test Osaka and much, as much as I want to do, I want this to go three sets and I want it to go close and Brady to have chances of winning, but I just can't see it. I think as soon as Osaka needs to find the extra gear at the back end of the set or on break points or break points down, she just seems to have the extra level that nobody can live with. And I think Brady can make this tight, but I do think Asak will have too much. You know, she's got the experience now, even though she's only 22 year old. She's won three Grand Slam titles. She's never not produced um, a best in a final. And if anything, I expect to see a better Naomi Asak than what we've seen throughout this tournament. I expect her to put a real show on and make a real statement performance and grow and uh, win this Australian Open and win her fourth Grand Slam title so I'm going to predict Naomi Osaka to win in straight sets and I don't want to discredit Jennifer Brady at all I think she's had a fantastic tournament I think she's a great hardcore player and as I mentioned if she wasn't in this final against Osaka I would probably predict her to win you know I think she's played very well and overcome some tough deficits and some tough matchups in this draw but I just think Osaka's on a complete different level to every other woman's play in the world, especially on a hard court, and that's why I predicted a pre-tournament, so I have to stick with her. And I think if we see the best of Naomi Osaka, we could see a real statement and stunning performance um, to win a fourth Grand Slam. But please leave your predictions for the women's final in this comment section below. I have also previewed the men's final, Djokovic against Medvedev. If you do want to check it out, that's already on the channel. Please leave a like on the video and if you could subscribe it is much appreciated as well. So thanks for watching throughout the tournament and I will see you for the final review.